Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. I'm Mark Wallace, this is my friend Bernard. And a couple of days ago, we shot a video together, an episode of Exploring Photography, on what is the correct kit, the correct lighting kit to have, which lights, which modifiers, all that stuff. And it wasn't just us, we had two other photographers, Et and Xavier. Unfortunately, I plugged the microphone in the line out instead of the line in. And so although we had a wonderful conversation about our philosophies of lighting and everything, you can't hear any, any of it. But the rest of the video is pretty darn good. And so I thought, let's not throw it away. Um, so we have some wacky audio in some of this video, but I think we did a good job of answering the question of which kit to get. Now how we did this is I rolled my motorcycle into the studio and each of us had about 20-ish, maybe an hour, minutes to choose whatever lighting gear that we wanted to use. So you guys brought your Profoto gear. We had some Ellen Crumb stuff there. I had my Profoto B2. We had some soft boxes and uh, umbrellas, all kinds of things. So we were shooting the exact same thing, a motorcycle on a seamless white, and we each chose a different path. And I thought that was really interesting to illustrate the point that there really isn't the perfect lighting kit. It depends on your style, what you want to do, how you're lighting it. But without further ado, let's watch us as we shoot a motorcycle in four different styles. I think we'll start with you. Here we go. Bernard. Bernard. Mark. Yes. What are you thinking? <laughs> what are you going to do? Uh, dude, I'm thinking I'm going to do a, a soft full. Mm -hmm. um, and just do uh, one key light. Uh, and uh, what modifier are you going to use? Uh, for the soft foam, I'm probably going to use the seven foot parabolic, mm -hmm. uh, but put the, the uh, diffuser on it, mm -hmm. and then probably like a four foot as key. Uh, if there's a five foot or something lying around here, I'll probably grab that instead. But okay. yeah, just like a two light setup. Might change, but that's what I'm thinking. Right, All right. let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm really happy with what these two lights are doing, but I'm just popping some speed lights in the background. I want to get some. <laughs> so I just want to get like, like. Sorry, I can't swear. Um, I just want to get this like pop, like from the background lights. And so I'm setting up two speed lights just in the background, uh, just to give like a nice little flare into the lens. Hopefully it works. I don't know. It's busy taping that because there's no other way to get it to. Stay on that stand. There you go. Uh, cool. Let's hope that triggers. Just let's trigger. See. Uh, yeah. Sweet. Okay. Let's give it a go. All right. Done. for this lighting setup? Uh, I think it's going about F8, F9 around there. I want the lights on in the bike, because I think it's going to give it um, um, a lot of, uh, the eyes going to attract it. Keep it very dark in the back, have a very contrasty light coming from the one side, and perhaps a, a line on top of the bike, like a strip light on top of the bike, just mm. to kind of highlight the, the parts so that, are, that are shiny. That are... So okay. that's what's in my head. Whatever happens later on is a different thing. Went with uh, with an octa with octabox or a tip octa, but it, it gave too much light. I wanted a very low key look because I want to highlight the chrome and the silver aspects of the bike. So it gave too much light, and I cut that off. But I wanted that to be gridded. So we got a pro photo, which is a much smaller light, a soft uh, octa, which is smaller, which is giving the light that I want. And another grid, I want the top to be illuminated, and they have a vignette in the back as well, which is gonna just, you know, give a nice look. I think mean, I'm gonna try a flash in the back, just for a bit of effect and see if it works. Okay, so the floor is a bit dirty. That's not a, that's, that's not a problem, right? Because you can always take it, but it's very, very close to what I really wanted. 
All right, so your lighting setup is a little bit weird because we're mixing all kinds of different brands and lights and triggers. And so I just want to take a second to sort of show everybody how you can mix all of these things. And so, uh, you know, you can be brand specific and only get a certain brand or you can mix and match. Yeah. And so here's, here's what's happened here. You've got a Profoto uh, trigger. This is the Air Remote. That is triggering the uh, Profoto B2, which is mine because we had a really small two foot octa here with the grid. So that's triggering that. This light is then triggering the Ellen Chrome. This is a D -Light, our D light four. So it's triggering that optically. That light is flashing. That light from here, because it has a grid, it can't see the back. So it's actually over here, we have a little speed light on the ground. This guy is being triggered by that uh, Ellen Chrome. It's doing nothing except it's firing a light and that light is then reaching this speed light, which sees that light, and it gets triggered, so we have some back. So we have three different brands, and an air remote trigger, and then two optical triggers, and it all works. And so that's how you can sort of mix and match things. From the concept that there's no right. Yeah, there's no right. And he, did you know you were gonna do this when you started? Uh, I had an idea, but um, like so, I said to you earlier, but not, not like this, I'm not, definitely not triggering the, the yeah, yeah. of lights. So yeah, you, you weren't gonna use the Profoto stuff? No. You were going to use the Ellen Chrome, but it was yeah. a little bit too large for what you wanted. It was, exactly. Um, and the speed lights were just sort of added flavor. So, again, there's no right answer. All right, are you done? Yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, I, I, would, I, would, I would work on this for another hour, but we don't have time but yeah. to perfect it. But basically... Proof of concept is pretty rad. So... lighting setup, what are you going to do? Okay, so like I said, it's kind of up in the air, but at the moment, uh, we have a, a seven foot uh, parabolic umbrella here, but I'm going to soften it, and I'm going to bring it as close to the bike as I can without it being in the frame, uh, so that the fall off is quick. Oh, and okay. I'm going to light the bike A little quick. inverse square law. Yeah. Nice. And uh, I think I'll feather it a little. I want it to touch the background, but not too much. Um, and then I think I might have a very, very subtle fall from the side so that the, the side of the bike isn't pitch black. And you're using your Profoto D1s for this. Yeah, I have a B1 and a All D1. Right. Ellen Crumb Profoto Challenge. All right, <laughs> let's see what you do. Cool. So I'm really happy with how it looks. Um, the light's doing exactly what I wanted. I'm just curious to see what it'll look like if I shoot it on a, like an 85. I basically, what I wanted was a large key from the right, but I really wanted to feather it the whole time. That's why I sort of angled this, but I didn't want it to light the whole background. And then I knew that this side of the bike was gonna be really, really dark. So there's a four foot octave there just to make it not pitch black. But I didn't want it to be really bright. I didn't want it to be even. And then that looked cool, but I wanted that over there felt a little bit bland to me. So we put a speed light all the way in at the back. So, so there's the full, that's the seven foot para. And that's the four foot uh, soft lighter as the full. Sorry, that's the key. And then this is the speed light. We had it angled a little bit up so that it doesn't hit too much of the ground. And that just added a little bit of a, I don't know, just felt a little bit more interesting. Kind of at the last minute, because I actually, I was shooting it on uh, 16 millimeters at first, and then at the last minute I thought, no, that looked a bit more interesting at 56. lighting setup, what I want to do is just get a really nice and easy high key setup and so I'm going to use the seven foot parabolic and see if I can use that using the opposite of what Xavier's doing. I'm going to bring it back far away so using the inverse square lot to get a big nice white light that covers everything. All right, so here's the key to my lighting setup. I'm going to try to keep it very, very simple using just one light. I want a high key look and the secret to this is this. This is a seven foot Westcott umbrella. It's really, really large and it's silver so it's a little bit punchy. So uh, Bernard is letting me use this 
And I'm even going to try to stick with my own lighting gear, which is my Profoto B2. I don't know if it's going to have enough punch to give me the light that I need, so I might have to switch over and borrow a D1, but I'm going to use a single light. And using the inverse square law, I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to have it at a distance from the uh, bike. And so the light will fall off. So back here, what we'll get is we'll get an even exposure on the bike and the background to sort of get, it's not going to be a high key, totally white background. We just don't have enough punch to do that, but it'll get us close. It'll be a light gray and that'll allow me to do all the layovers to sort of say what the lights and the tires and all that kind of stuff is. And so hopefully I'll get a shot that works for the blog. Um, I'll probably have the camera a little bit lower so I can see things like the skid plate and the extra armor and all that kind of crud. Let's see how it works. Done. One light. Take that, Zach. Mm. All right, well, thank you so much, guys. We had four different lighting setups with four different photographers. And uh, the point of this whole thing is that there is no right answer for the gear that you're going to use. What you'll find is that you'll start using something and during the middle of a shoot you'll switch to something else. You're going to use whatever tools that you have available to you. So don't stress out about it. Look at your budget and then based on that start with one light and then add two and three and add maybe a, an umbrella, a softbox, etc. You're going to grow your toolbox and you're going to get something that works for you. But to make it easy for you, we've taken all the gear that we use today. If you look in the comments of this video, we've listed everything so you can just click on it and you can check out the gear and the prices and the budget and all that kind of stuff for yourself. Thank you so much, you guys, for helping out. We've included links to their portfolios and all their stuff as well. So make sure you click on it and see all the amazing work that they do in more than 20 minutes. And thank you for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe. It's absolutely free. So click on the button and do that today. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next time. Cheers, guys. Thanks, Mark. Thank you.